My name is Terrell Dew Johnson. I'm Thana Atham. You know, I, I, I will start my, um, my talks about, um, you know, with, with a picture of my, my family, my grandparents, my, my grandfather, the late Alex Pancho, and the late Catherine Pancho. And I start with them because they were a huge influence in the work that I do today. They, I was very fortunate enough to uh, spend um, a part of my young life living with them and learning about the traditional ways, especially the foods. My grandfather was a farmer and, my gran and, and also a healer. He was a medicine man. And my grandmother was a herbalist. And so I always saw people coming to the house asking to help them get better, get well. And so I was very fortunate that they were, um, were doing that. And they always taught me, you know, help your family, help your community in any way you can. So my grandfather was a, fa a farmer as well. You know, uh, he came from the village of uh, Cowlick, and he lived there with his family, and he grew his own food, and he was a farmer. So years ago, on the reservation, pretty much every village on the reservation had farmland. And so he was also a farmer and grew his own food. And um, my mom used to tell stories about how they had to go out there and work hard and work for their food because if they didn't work and take care of their plants, their crops, they wouldn't have any food. So she talked about how you know they would go out and help um, divert water from the rains that were coming in to water the plants, chase a lot of the wild animals that were eating their plants. And so this is a picture of her and her sisters getting ready to um, pound beans to clean them. But uh, so this is how they lived and they were healthy. They were moving, they were being physical. And so they, they were very healthy. But unfortunately, um, in the 50s, the 40s and 50s, the men were taken away from the villages to go um, fight these wars. And the children were taken away and put into boarding schools. So there wasn't anybody around to really work on, on the fields. So the food, we were losing that food, we were losing that way of life because we were being forced to um, learn other people's ways of living. And so um, I put this picture here because um, when I was growing up, I noticed in my family a lot of people were dying. You know, I had family members die from food-related um, illnesses, diabetes. You know, I had an uncle who passed away during uh, a procedure of removing one of his limbs because of diabetes, and he died on the operating table. And so I was wondering, what is being done? What is being done to stop this? You know, and it was um, looking and asking questions and talking about, well, what happened? And it was because we were being um, moving away from our traditional foods. We weren't planting anymore. We weren't eating the foods that came from the desert. And so, unfortunately, I had lost my grandfather and grandmother to complications of diabetes. And so I put this there because it's a really strong image of what I saw out there. So I got together with some friends, and we decided to form this group um, where we started to grow traditional foods. And so it was a little small group. It was a little small um, neighborhood garden. And when we started um, planting, a lot of the kids from the neighborhood were coming around wanting to know what we're doing, what we're doing. You know, and we got them involved. We had them um, till gardens. We had them plant seeds. But before we did that, we wanted to do it the way um, traditional farmers did it. And it was when you start with blessing the ground, you bless the ground, and then after that you bless the seeds. Then you sing songs when you're planting the seeds in the ground so that they'll grow, that they'll be plentiful, and that they can feed the people. And so we were doing this, and with just an, an idea of, of helping the community, bringing back these traditional foods and reminding my community that this is the foods that kept us alive for thousands of years. And so we actually started um, working with elders coming, um, coming to our organization, to our program, and having them going out and teach young people how to recognize the traditional foods, how to prepare the traditional foods. 
but also the language and the stories that go behind those on specific traditional foods. Our little garden that we had actually started growing. It started growing to the point where we had um, a second garden that my grandfather, that my family actually donated to our organization to use because it hadn't been used for over 30 years. And so my family thought it would be a great idea to pay um, homage to my grandfather by giving us his old farmland. And so we got that and we started growing more traditional foods, more beans, more squash, more corn. Then with that, our garden grew to a 180 acre farm where we were growing these foods again. And people started to recognize and find out that, oh, that little program that just started has traditional foods. Because back in the 50s, when we were planting in every village, we were producing 1.7 million pounds of beans. But just 30 years ago, you were lucky if you only got 100. So we wanted to bring back these foods. We wanted to make this uh, accessible for the community. I put this picture up here because it really explains a lot of what we were doing. We were actually having elders pass on the knowledge, the tradition to the young people. And as I said earlier, when we're planting, traditionally we do a lot of preparation. There's a lot of praying, there's a lot of um, um, stories, there's a lot of singing, traditional songs. And so this image here is a picture of one of our well-respected elders in the Thana Autumn community, Danny Lopez, the late Danny Lopez. We had him come and he was singing and praying to a little squash plant. And our farm, our farm manager at the time's daughter came and you know, stood there and, and tried to sing with him and watched what he was doing. And it's a really powerful image. So we started making these foods accessible to the people. People were coming and buying these foods. They knew that these foods were easy to get. With the farms being so big and the food that was coming in, we were actually very um, happy to give a lot of these foods away to the community, especially to elders who um, couldn't get these foods, couldn't grow these foods. For a long time when we started doing this, I always would hear, I always would hear people say, oh, we used to eat these foods. Oh, we used to grow these foods. And it was always in a past tense kind of thing. And, you know, right now, I don't hear anybody say that. I hear people saying, we're eating these foods now. And again, because this was something really new that we were trying to bring back, we were revitalizing the culture through the foods and through the arts and through the language. We started opening our farm up to, to schools where they would send um, kids out and they would spend a day helping the farmers water the plants, gather the plants, weed the plants. So, um, and our reward to them was giving them some squash to take home and eat. And we were growing a lot of these traditional foods like the squash, the melons, the corns, and the beans. And I always tell people, you know, you're not just looking at a bean, you're looking at the entire culture of the Donna Autumn. Because in that bean, we refer to them in our language. There are songs we sing specifically for these beans when they're growing. There are songs that you sing specifically when you're harvesting them. You know, it's even in our legends. Coyote stole a bag of beans and he was running away and he tripped. And the bag of beans flew into the air and created the Milky Way. So, you know, it's not just a bean. <laughs> we started working a lot with, um, with schools on the reservation. One of our goals that we had was to get these traditional foods in the schools so that these kids can start eating these traditional foods. Um, and we were hoping that it could happen on a daily basis. You know, so it took about eight years to actually really get someone to listen to us and say these foods are good for the students. Right now, I don't know in your schools, on the reservation, most of the schools out there do heat and serve. It's when you open a box of food and you reheat it and then you serve it to the kids. This is bad processed food. And it really doesn't do much for the kids when they eat them. You know, sometimes in the morning they'll have um, some milk, chocolate milk, some um, pancakes with syrup, you know, and they're on the sugar high. 
but then they crash. And so with our foods, we know that it will give them energy, brain food, and make them perform a lot more better in schools. And so we actually started to work with the schools on the reservation to do these gardens. And our goal, again, was for them to also be self-sufficient and put these foods in their, in their lunches. So we started working with kids, and we teach them about the ground. We teach them about um, the seeds, and again, with the songs and the legends. And um, some schools were very successful. You know, we didn't just grow traditional foods. We grew other foods, healthy foods, like carrots, tomatoes, onions. And it was really interesting to find out that a lot of the kids didn't know where their food came from. I remember this one girl was looking at a carrot, and she pulled it out of the ground, and she was like, I didn't know carrots came from the ground. And so then we have a lot of kids excited to eat these traditional foods, you know. And I really think that we are training their young taste buds to enjoy this flavorful, healthy food. Because I believe for a long time, eating those processed foods, those um, heat and serve foods, their taste buds were numb. So we were actually bringing them back alive. So with all that happening, I always thought, I always dreamt that wouldn't it be great to have a restaurant <laughs> where we could have these foods? And so I bought the idea to the Toka crew, and we worked very hard to get uh, a cafe started on the reservation. And we had um, chefs from all over come and develop recipes using our traditional foods, putting a modern twist to the, to the, to the dishes. And so well, maybe about five years ago, we opened our doors. And the whole idea was, again, to make this food accessible to the community, to have um, them enjoy the foods. So here are some community members um, eating the, the, the food, a family enjoying their meal. We had this program where we actually started having um, non-native chefs or chefs from all over the country come and cook for our community for one night using our traditional foods and then making these incredible dishes, tasty dishes of, of foods that I've never even tried before. We opened our kitchen to schools to come in and see how a real live restaurant works in the back. And so we actually had them prepare some of our, um, our desserts and um, tasty, healthy foods. So this was the cafe, you know, and it was all because of one simple idea that all this happened. And it was because we were looking to the past to creating solutions for the future. And that was with that little simple idea that this whole organization, how we got this restaurant happened. And so, from, in my eyes, the intersection was the cafe, because we actually started seeing other people from different communities come and enjoy that food. We actually also started seeing people from different countries who heard about us and wanted to um, taste these foods. So, and it was amazing, you know, and, and they, they fell in love with the food. Mary loved the food, you know, so, um, Another idea, another dream that I have that hope, that hope someday will come true is to open a restaurant here in Tucson and in Phoenix. You know, I think it's time to, to, to share our foods, you know, and to help heal other communities because we're in the process of healing our communities. And once we're healed, we'll be able to heal others and share with others. So... Thank you for letting me talk about the organization that is making a huge impact with just one idea, a simple idea, to our community. So if you ever want to come out to, to the Desert Rain Cafe, hop on Highway 86, head west for about an hour, and look for a little town called Sells, and then look for us. Thank you so much. <laughs>